Good afternoon, everybody. This is Ross Heron from Payroll HQ. Thank you very much for giving us your time this afternoon. Um, just a, a couple of admin components to get started. Um, everybody on this call, apart from myself and Keith, are on mute. If you do have any questions um, towards the end of the session, there will be a, a Q&A segment, maybe five to eight minutes. Um, please ask your questions into the Q&A area within the Zoom portal, and we will do our uh, best to respond to each question. If we're unable to answer them live on air, um, I will share those with Keith and um, get a response and share that with, with the group. This call will also be recorded, so if um, you need to jump off the call um, or you would like to listen to it again or share it with anybody within your organization, you will be able to do that. Um, we will make sure that recording is available with the next 20. So welcome, welcome to the fifth episode of the Payroll HQ Learning Lab series. For those of you joining us for the first time, welcome. And for those of you who are part of the Payroll HQ Learning Lab community, welcome back. Our discussion topic today is transformation, in particular, the transformation of, H of HR functions and the knock-on effect uh, HR transformational initiatives have on payroll, initiatives that present both challenges and opportunities. Our guest speaker today is, is Keith Wilkinson. Keith is the principal of the consulting firm T2C. In his previous roles, Keith, Keith has managed large transformational um, projects within HR for Origin Energy and most recently Coca-Cola Amatel. Over the next 20 minutes, he will share knowledge, insight, including hints and tips that we hope provide you with new learnings and the opportunity to create stronger business outcomes um, for each of you that have joined the call today. So that's it um, from me. I am going to hand over to Keith and we will get the show on the road. Great. Um, can we just go out one slide, please? There we go. That's it. Great. Thanks very much, Ross. Um, good afternoon to everybody. Um, uh, as Ross has indicated, uh, I have a bit of background where I've spent a lot of time in HR transformation. Um, believe it or not, through most of my HR career, I have also overseen management of the payroll function, for better or for worse. Um, and now I'm just wanting to share some insights um, some opinions, uh, and you may not agree with them, but they're there also to, I think, help get you to think a little bit more uh, about what's going on in the world of HR transformation and payroll. Next slide. Yeah, thanks. Um, where is the future of payroll going? Because I think it's an important question. Um, I look at it in, in, in a number of different ways. There, there is an aura of significant change and disruption whatever you're doing whatever systems you have at hand whatever expectations there are in your business everybody is looking to see how you can do things differently how you can do things more cheaply how you can do things digitally and we are all of us regardless of whatever functional background we have caught up in that aura of pressure and disruption in the world in which we operate. I would say increasingly as well in the area of payroll, um, there's been a shift where over the years, payroll has been the owner of, of people data, whether it's the amounts of people get paid and tax and everything else. Payroll has been responsible for inputting that data, checking that data, maintaining that data, um, and has been, you know, really at the center of a lot of the operational elements of um, people data. That I have seen change significantly over the last particularly six or seven years, where payroll is now being shifted um, from being the owner to the supplier of data. So you put some data in and it feeds through. It is very much 
uh, an element where sometimes, often you only get the outputs what of a lot of other people have contributed along the way until it gets into the payroll domain. Uh, I think as well, what we've seen increasingly, particularly in the last 10 years, is a move from standalone payroll systems to much more integrated HR systems. Um, and you know, whatever background you're from, you'll have seen that, whether it's Oracle, whether it's Workday, whether it's success factors or some of the smaller um, integrated systems that are around, it's that intent to try and bring all of that data together. Uh, to make the most of it. And, and one of the things I'll talk about a little later is what does that combined data enable us to be able to start using the information contained to derive some insights and some outcomes. As well, on top of that, what we've seen particularly as well is increasingly new initiatives, not necessarily our initiatives, as we all know, the introduction of single touch payroll um, didn't come from us um, and has come from the ATO. Um, but that increasingly has put additional pressure and requirements on both the payroll function and also on our engagement and communication through to the workforce so that, that they truly understand both the implications of this and the way that it changes um, how they receive information, how they can access data. Uh, and where to go to get that. And last but not least, really, I suppose, uh, against all of this um, is that ongoing debate that a lot of organisations go through is, does payroll sit within the context of this organisation or is it an issue, a process that we should outsource? I have a personal view. My personal view is uh, it's, it's the choice of last resort. Um, I wouldn't go down an outsourcing process um, uh, unless it was absolutely clear um, that there were both significant savings, but I had absolutely nailed my processes. And I think these days we are in still in such high amounts of disruption that I could not, from an HR perspective, say that my processes were so uh, defined and tightly contained that it was um, safe to move that to an external source. I think you know, once, once removed, uh, it then places a, a great strain on the organisation if there are significant changes ahead. So let's move on. Um, I, I want to touch on a number of things that I think helps reposition payroll for the future. Um, uh, and you may be drawn to some of these very easily, um, or on the other hand, you may find that this is not an avenue where you think there's an appropriate view or perspective for you within your organisation. I take that. I am just throwing out some ideas because one of the things that I do see is that we, um, within HR, within payroll, are still having to do more with less people, quicker, uh, and the pressure on, is on us to defend our territory but also to demonstrate the value that we can bring still into the organization and again that's one of the further rebuttals that you can have against a desire to push for outsourcing within an organization um, collaborative relationships one of the areas where i have seen significant issues over the years um, whether it's both the origin cca or, or even all search before that, um, it is the need to partner with workplace relations, um, to understand and to be close to the ER and IR negotiations that go on. Um, that's driven, I say, um, predominantly because of the complexity of EBA administration. Uh, we all know that. Uh, you are caught up in that, in ensuring that uh, when an EBA is agreed that all the relevant elements of the pay changes are incorporated into the payroll system or they're incorporated into the time and attendance system, however you've got it structured, but that they flow through to be able to produce the right outcomes for you. Um, but one of the problems that I have found consistently is that without an agreed 
um, approach or an understanding by the ER team or the IR team, whoever's undertaking that process, is that they don't understand the complexity that they are creating for the team in payroll. That they go off, undertake a negotiation, are driven by a range of circumstances, whether that's by the unions or by workers' demands, as to what is required, but they don't understand the additional work, the increased complexity that that is creating within a payroll environment. You take that and, and you know, in a CCA environment, the Coca-Cola, um, we had 28 um, different EBAs. Um, that's not, not an average, but certainly it's, it's not an excessive number uh, for a large uh, multinational uh, across um, Australia, but again, made complex because they're all driven by local solutions and not a broader focus on what it is that is required and would add value from an organisational perspective. So I would say that one of the clear things that can be done is a aligned strategy between payroll and IR to work to simplify um, to get alignment between those EBAs and rule out and eliminate some of the complexity that has developed over the years. That complexity is often just drawn um, by not even knowing and understanding um, how to make things easier from a payroll perspective. Um, a, a strategy that then highlights what the pathway should be because you know, th these negotiations are only on a three-year basis often, um, what the strategy should be over the next 10 years, because you're never gonna get the outcomes in one negotiation. You need to be on a pathway that takes the organization forward and eliminates the complexity over a period of time. The next issue I think is, again, is one of the, an ongoing debate that goes on in many organizations where does payroll even sit? Um, I, I rescued payroll from finance at Coca-Cola. Um, I think I rescued it. Uh, I, they, they certainly seemed a lot happier once it moved across. But I do certainly believe that um, HR is a place for payroll to exist. Um, uh, that is because um, what we see here is that the payroll data is a continuing collation of people data from the point of a candidate making an application and then going through an onboarding system and then creating that flow of people data that then leads into a payroll environment. Um, that data, as I said, is, is an important aspect. And increasingly as well, there is an emphasis on time and attendance systems and how they drive um, rosters, schedules, EBAs, and the outputs that then flow from there into the payroll system. But one of the issues that we found as well is where is the source of truth within this? Um, and it's a, a certainly a key issue in which I think payroll have a responsibility to be able to focus an organization to ensure that they are drawing down and only have a single source of truth whether that's data that's compiled in a time and attendance, but is solely held as a source of truth uh, in an integrated HR system, or whether the desire is to have it, the time and attendance system as your core source of truth around EBAs and pay rates and everything else. Um, but you need to be very much part of that debate, but look at it from a holistic point of view that understands where the true value lies for your organization and how you can then protect that data and manage that data. And that takes me through to the next point. Um, if we could just change the slide, please, Ross. It's this whole area of data governance. Um, uh, it really, in my mind, does not get the attention that it needs to have in any organization. Um, it is a critical piece uh, of any transformation. So many people go down the pathway uh, of, of looking at new systems, new opportunities, um, and all the work is done to undertake the implementation. 
data's cleaned, it's processed, set up with new processes, new systems. Um, but the ongoing care and attention to that data once the system is live is often missing. I, I believe that the, one of the core capabilities of payroll over the years has been to manage that data. As I said, historically, I, I, you know, you've been there at the very end. You've been the owner of the data. You've, you've controlled and maintained it. Um, that has moved away over time. Um, but it is a core capability within most payroll teams to understand the value of the data, to understand its importance, to know the immediacy of the updates that are required to ensure the right outputs at any point in time. You know, critical pieces, we should be paying people the right amount of money for the time worked and the effort in, instilled. Uh, uh, and within payroll, I don't need to emphasize that enough. You, you, you're at the very forefront, because as soon as somebody doesn't get enough, they're on the phone and they're chasing up and wanting to know why they've not been paid appropriately. So you understand the value that comes from that data. Uh, and it is a key requirement in, my, in all of these cloud HR systems to control and maintain and manage the data on an ongoing basis. Uh, it, it is an area where I believe there is a significant opportunity for the skill set that sits within payroll. Uh, an area where you can even go and claim that grant um, uh, and say, look, we should be controlling this. We should be able to help around data governance. So it's not just the inputted data. I think there's also a, an area around master data management. Um, and, and as you look at these systems, positional data, um, organizational data are critical elements to how these systems work and operate. Um, and I would say, again, if you're going to want to take some space, owning master data management, owning the integrity of the system from a data perspective is an issue that I, I think it is easily taken up by people with skills from a payroll background. Um, integrity of that data, ongoing validation and management is a, also understated in, in a lot of organizations. Uh, the other thing to remember is, again, you know, it's often hard to find somebody to fill that role or create a role in any organization when there is increasing pressure on headcount. So to be able to go and talk to you, your HR leads um, and say, we can start to work in this space. We can take ownership of these issues for you. Um, it would add value from the skills and the opportunities that you have to offer your organization. Next slide, please. Um, I think another area, again, which is very close to the skill set that sits within the payroll environment is that of data analytics. It's a skill set that is in short supply and, and certainly really is not core HR capability. I know very few HR people or from a business partnering background or other backgrounds that actually have a strong skill set in HR analytics. Um, but it is a requirement really these days with all this data available to us that flows into an integrated HR system for HR to use to be able to create value for the organizations in which they're operating. We have so much information about people, about the organization, about the issues that we're facing that we need to be able to build up that skill. But the skill actually comes from people that fully understand the business understand the business, the core drivers of that business, and the people issues that the business faces, and, and are sufficiently capable to ask the right questions. And those questions are many um, for us as organizations. Where is the right talent coming from? And that's not necessarily about finding the right sourcing, but it's what experience produces the best employees in our organization. Now, you might go, well, that's actually not a payroll issue, but I go, you have the analytical skills to take the data that sits within the system to be able to ask those sorts of questions. 
closer to home is where is the the greatest value being lost with an organization i believe that a lot of that is in through payroll management through un, uh, disciplined approaches to leave management to leave requests and how they're managed the ability of managers to be able to complete those uh, approvals in a timely fashion that then leads to loss to overpayment to recorrection of pay amounts that actually then cause a lot of both angst time complexity within the organization and loss of value to the organization as well so i think there's a real opportunity uh, for the payroll piece in there i also think there's a as we get to the end it, there's a real opportunity to start making some changes um, i have to say that you know, the world has changed significantly in the last 15 years um, and we need to be looking and seeing what can be simplified what can be automated within our processes uh, you know, a clear example is, is you know, there's a lot of forms that are produced um, that come in and feed into payroll, whether they're salary sacrifice forms. I'll give it a significant example of when I joined Coca-Cola, um, joined their employee share scheme, which is a uh, post-tax deduction. But the form that I was given um, required me to complete absolutely every piece of information the organization had on me, plus my TFN, which the organization already had. Now, that doesn't make sense. We should be trying and driving an automated process within our organizations that say, if we've got this data, we don't need it. We already know it's allocated that employee. What do we specifically need that's going to um, authentic authenticate them? But then outside of that, we, can, we already have the data to hand. So again, let's, let's give people the experience they have today when you pick up an iPhone and it auto fills with home details or work details uh, and it can identify either of those two, um, all of the things you need for a form. So we should be a lot smarter and giving our employees the right experience that makes life easy for them. They, they are in an organization to do a, a job, not to actually spend time filling out HR forms and HR data. It's how do we make life simpler so they can spend more time generating the value that they will do in the, in the business. How do we shift their activities to focus on those value add tasks? We, that's what we should be doing. If we're carving out automating processes, automating those center link forms, um, so that it just gets produced um, at, the, at the completion of somebody's uh, service within an organization. They're the things that can be done. But also what can be stopped? Um, an interesting conversation and debate I have had in both Origin and Coca-Cola Amazon are why are we making payments into multiple bank accounts? Now, 15 years ago, it was a good idea um, because there wasn't internet banking, there wasn't mobile banking. Um, and it enabled people to be able to sort their financial affairs out. Now, the world's different. I can pick up my mobile phone, and from the moment I get paid, I can ensure that money gets diverted into the right accounts. I can manage it on the go at any point in time. So why are we creating the complexity within our organizations by allowing things like multiple bank accounts? Um, there should be a single bank account and allow the employee then to manage their money we are not the managers of their money. It's going, why are we there? How do we make life easier for ourselves? But also, how do we actually use the tools that are increasingly being made available to everybody uh, to our advantage? Look, there's some of the ideas that I've, I've got. Um, some of the um, experiences I've had over the last sort of 10, 15 years. Uh, I hope that those thoughts have been useful for you. Uh, and give you some context about things that you could do within your organization to make life easier for you or ways that you can change of working uh, for yourselves that make life different. Thank you, Keith. That was, um, that was very insightful. Um, so thank you very much. 
Um, we have now got uh, four minutes on, until the end of our session, so if you do have any questions, please enter those into the Q&A section within the portal. I wanted to ask a question myself, Keith, and, and drawing on your experience over the last 10, 15 years, and particularly on the uh, HR transformation projects you've been involved with at Origin and CCA. And this is more of a, I guess, a human question, and it relates to mindset. Um, how big an obstacle is mindset to achieving, you know, transformational success in, in, in from your perspective? Oh, uh, absolutely. I mean, I think it comes from a, a number of steps you need to take along the way. You need to create a vision of what the world, future world is going to be look like. Because if you don't actually enthuse people and engage them about the journey they're about to take um the, they don't get it and and that's everybody that's but that's a functional piece from an hr or a payroll perspective but it's also um your, your business leaders because they need to be completely behind this if you're going to take on a shift to employee self-service or manager self-service if the your business leaders are not fully behind it and engaged it they'll be the first to look for ways around it as well but they won't be encouraging their teams and their business units to adopt those those approaches and the workforce they need to be able to understand why they're on this journey what difference it's going to make to them and it should be in in the ways that we talk about in terms of how we're going to make life simpler and easier for them um, but i think the mindset starts to become negative if they uh, don't understand the journey they're taking, they're not engaged as the, as the journey progresses and they're not uh, informed about where we're going to go. And you need to be transparent. You know, I mean, uh, one of the biggest pushbacks that I've seen over time around um, self-service is all I'm doing now is HR's work. So it's about how do you actually prepare people to engage them to say, no, you're not, we're actually making life easier for you so that you have direct access to this information. You're already in a lot of cases of making all these approvals, but we're just making it in an online fashion that enables you to do it anytime, anywhere, at any place. Thank you. Uh, let me just check the Q and A area. We don't have any questions at present um, from our audience. Um, we are uh, coming to the top of the hour, um, so I'm mindful of time. I, I would like to thank, thank you, Keith. Thank you for your, your time today. And um, thank you for sharing uh, with the Payroll HQ Learning Lab community. Thank you for all participants. We had 62 individuals on the call today, um, so that is fantastic. Thank you to each and every one of you for, um, for attending. As I mentioned at the top of the call, uh, we will share the recording uh, with you within the next 24 hours. We will also, if anybody would like to you know, get in touch with Keith directly, um, please do so via myself, so just flick me a quick email and I will send on Keith's um, contact details and um, you can reach out to Keith uh, directly and take your conversation forward from there. All I have left to do now is to say thank you and to close the call. Thank you everybody. Thanks Ross, thanks everybody.